let's talk about optimal lifting frequency for cyclists. Hey folks, Dr. Alex Harrison here from Alacrity Endurance. If you're here from our endurance sport lifting templates video because you wanted that deeper dive into lifting frequency for cycling, you're in the right place. If you're here because the YouTube algorithm sent you or I linked you here directly from one of our favorite forums online, welcome. The main factors affecting lifting frequency choices for cyclists are as follows. Riding frequency. Seriousness of your cycling slash cross country mountain biking goals. Third, how interested are you in fat loss, weight loss, or muscle gain? Any specific strength or sport goals alongside cycling? Your need for sprint power. Phase of the cycling season you're in? How busy are you? How much sleep do you get? How much do you like lifting? And last but certainly not least, how much have you lifted in the past? Let's look at how each of these factors should affect how many times a week you resistance train. If you find this video helpful, share it with a friend, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. It'll help me produce more like it. Faster. And who doesn't love faster? I actually have an assistant who's generating a mega list of every question I've ever been asked publicly, and that's where this YouTube channel is going. All right, let's dig in. How should your riding frequency affect your lifting frequency? If you're riding more, you should probably lift less. If you're riding six, seven days a week, I'd be hard pressed to recommend more than three lifting sessions a week. For cycling performance goals, probably not more than two. If you just like riding a lot, but also kind of want to be a muscular cyclist, well, consider riding a little bit less to make a bit more space in your schedule. But even if you don't ride less, you can bump up your lifting frequency to three, maybe four days a week. If you're riding one, two, or three days per week, you'll probably be just fine with lifting three or four days a week. The take home is there should be an inverse relationship between riding frequency and lifting frequency. So what about the seriousness of your cycling goals? How does that affect lifting frequency? If you're a serious cyclist and are looking to improve race outcomes, you probably ought to target lifting two days per week, or maybe as little as one day a week, especially in season. If you're just out enjoying the experience of riding a couple times a week, shoot, you could easily lift three, four, five days a week. Just be aware that going beyond four days a week might really start to hinder cycling performance because of both fatigue accumulation and maybe even specific adaptations that are counter to cycling performance. Overall, the more serious you are about cycling, the closer you should be to zoning in on resistance training about two days a week, maybe three for some of the reasons we'll get to, a little bit later and they have to do with training history. Less serious? Go ahead and lift more often. Very little trade-off there. Next, let's talk about body composition. Body composition goals like fat loss, muscle gain, or both, and how they should affect lifting frequency for cyclists. First, the best predictor of the amount of muscle you will gain from the training you do in the gym is the total volume of mechanical work accomplished in the gym. Second, calorie deficit is what drives fat loss. Calorie deficit in the presence of a strong muscle growth stimulus, like lots of lifting approaching muscular failure, is the most surefire way to lose fat. Whether you're seeking muscle gain or fat loss, higher lifting frequencies as a cyclist are probably optimal. As we'll see when we get to considerations about how much you've lifted in the past, you may not need much lifting at all to retain your muscle while accomplishing fat loss as a cyclist. Fat loss can be accomplished via calorie deficit alone, but if you want to retain your muscle, you'd be wise to include some lifting. If you have lots of muscle, it'll probably take more lifting if the goal is to retain all of it. If you're anything like me, former gym rat, and you have muscle to spare, you may not need any lifting at all to be perfectly happy with your level of muscularity while cycling all the time. You might even wish that some of it would disappear, especially when the group ride chooses the hilly route. Probably the single most important reason someone who rides regularly should lift with higher frequency is if they're interested in specifically gaining muscle. Muscle mass gain is challenging. Challenging enough as it is, and high volumes of endurance training have a small but meaningful interference effect on muscle growth. Thankfully, less so in cycling than something like running, probably due to differences in time under tension. So if you want to avoid like looking like a cyclist, you might benefit from lifting three or four days a week. The long and short of it is the more you ride, the more you'll need to lift if muscle gain is a priority. And second, the more fat loss or muscle gain are a priority, either one, the more frequently you're going to need to lift. But maybe listen to the last section of this video because it's about how your lifting history and current muscularity might play into it. The next consideration in your lifting frequency as a cyclist is do you have specific strength goals or other sporting goals outside of your riding? If you're competing in powerlifting or CrossFit, or maybe you like 
downhill or track. You're going to want to keep up with that in the weight room. If these outside goals are important to you, then higher frequency lifting like three, four days a week is probably optimal. If you don't have any other sport or strength goals specifically, then let the other factors guide your lifting frequency choice. Speaking of track or downhill goals, or just really being a well-rounded cyclist, what is your need for sprint power? If you're one of those guys with a 4 watt per kilo or even 5 watt per kilo FTP or girls with a 3, 4 watt per kilo FTP, but you know that if the race comes down to a sprint, you're going to have to go early because touching a thousand watts is a pipe dream, let alone holding it for 10 seconds, you might benefit from more frequent lifting than someone like me. Mr. 3 watt per kilo, 2000 watt guy, on the other hand, probably needs to not even look at a weight next year. Now, if you're not the 2000 watt guy, the next thing you should consider when drawing up your weekly schedule is the phase of training you're in. Are you in season? If so, lifting should be a small adjunct, even for the most muscle-hungry men and women. If you're prepping for something like Leadville or Unbound 12 weeks from now, probably should be down to two days a week of lifting and maybe less. Is your A race four weeks from now? If so, then getting your resistance training down to a frequency of two days a week max is mandatory if performance is on your mind. Fewer is probably better. This one's pretty simple. The closer you are to your A race, the lower your lifting frequency should be. As a competitive cyclist, the overall season might look like one to four days a week for the first month or two of your off season, then move to one to three days a week of lifting for most of the harder off season and preseason training, and then subsequently down to one or two days a week tops in season. Whether you, the competitive cyclist, maxes out at one or four days per week of lifting largely comes down to a needs analysis. My wife, a born sprinter with superlative power and ample muscularity, lifts no more than two days a week all season long. And the only reason she does that much is because she loves lifting. If I could convince her to do less, I would. If I were writing a program for a recreational rider, I might add a lifting day each week to the more competitive rider's recommendation. So that might be three to four in the first off-season months, two to three in the rest of the season, and maybe part of the in-season, and then down to two days a week for the lead into races. Maybe in the final week or two in the lead up to a big race, down to one day a week. But I usually don't adjust frequency, I just reduce volume and intensity instead as a race approaches. Goal there is to keep speed of movement higher in the gym and eliminate fatigue. If you're somebody who mostly likes to ride when the weather's good and just doesn't really have any specific cycling performance goals, maybe you don't have a power meter, then three days a week is great. Go lift more when the weather is bad and two days a week when the weather is great and you want to be outside. Which leads me to the next factors to consider. How busy are you? How much sleep are you getting? And how much do you like lifting? Like I said in the runner's version of this video, check it out by the way, I get the tired nurse or doctor lawyer client all the time who doesn't really love lifting and has been convinced by some coach somewhere that they need to be in the gym three days a week or it's not worth their time folks if you're not the biggest fan of the gym or you're run ragged by the realities of life just lift less often you can make great results in body composition riding fitness and injury prevention with two days a week of lifting there's no reason to do more if you're cramped for time now if you're young and dumb and you haven't yet figured out how ignoring your health leads to short-term gains in financial stability and pursued it to the detriment of your sleep, like you're still getting eight to nine hours of sleep, you still have some time available on your calendar, and you kind of like the gym, go lift four days a week. It poses very little risk unless you have a highly competitive cycling schedule. Generally, the less you're sleeping as a cyclist, the less you should be lifting. If you're sitting there tweaking your calendar, trying to figure out how to fit three lifting sessions into your weekly training schedule, the answer is just do two days of lifting. Full stop. Sleep loss in exchange for more gym sessions as a cyclist is the worst idea on the planet. It'll lead to getting that gym session in and then crashing and burning midweek next week if you do somehow manage to make it through week one. Huge recommendation here. Don't be the calendar squeezer with your lifting sessions. And finally, one of the biggest considerations in all of training programming is your own training history. Training history plus genetics give you the body you have now. So how much have you lifted in the past? If you're a former or current power lifter or played football in college, I will bet money that you'd be a better cyclist if you lifted less than you are now. Of course, your goal may not be purely cycling performance. I totally get that. But if it is, you darn well better find a low volume lifting plan that reduces your fatigue and avoids indiscriminate hypertrophy if the goal is to be stronger and a more competitive cyclist. If your goal is fat loss and you're stronger than most of your cyclist friends, 
just put your time and energy into riding, fueling training, and a healthy diet, and maybe one day a week of lifting. Now, if you're one of the guys who fits the cyclist look and you'd like to be a bit more muscular, you might benefit from a higher lifting frequency than all the other factors might suggest. Takeaways here are, if cycling performance is the goal, then the more you've lifted in the past, the more you can get away with not lifting now. Conversely, the less time you've spent in the gym in the past, the more you should probably consider it now, but also the less lifting you'll actually need to see strength and power improvement. If you haven't lifted seriously in years, you're super likely to have really fast strength gain. Even two days a week of lifting is sufficient. You don't have to not see your children to squeeze more sessions in to get a measurable benefit. The notion that lifting plans need to be even two days per week to get a strength benefit is total hogwash. Now, if you're kind of in that place where you already are the most muscular of your friends and you kind of like that, and you are pretty well built, and you don't want to lose it, but you also want to ride more to keep up with the fitter guys, it's a bit of a catch-22 for you because while yes, for riding performance, you may not need to lift at all, the more muscle you have and the more time you've had to spend building it in the past, the more frequently you'll need to lift now if 100% muscle retention is the goal, especially while building riding fitness. So that's been my deep dive on how a cyclist or a cross-country mountain biker should think about the emphasis they place on lifting every week. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, post them in the comments, subscribe, push that little notification bell, and I'll do my best to make a video to answer your question. Until next time.